On the trail to Sedalia, Missouri, from day to day, you fall into the habit of trying to read your men, guess what makes them tick. But you don't make much headway. It isn't easy to figure grown-up humans who take this kind of a life for 30 bucks a month and keep. So you finally give up. And you're just glad there's a breed like them to get the beeves to where they're going. I got a good reason to be glad. My name's Gil Favor, trail boss. Pete? No. Come on, Pete. You're the only one in this outfit who knows how to sew right. No doubt about that. Well, I don't know. I've been working on this thing for about two days, and all I seem to get is a thumb that looks like a sieve. Help me. Help me. Somebody help me. Please, won't somebody help me? He's out there. No, no, I'll, I'll be all right. You've got to get him. He's out there. Oh. Pete, Rowdy, take a look around out there. See if you see anybody. Be careful. Wishbone, medicine chest. Gunshot wound. Not too bad. But she's lost a lot of blood. Why don't you help? Easy. The men will help. Now lie still and don't try to talk. But they'll kill him. They? My husband made us right away. While he held them off. It'd be a waste of water now, Mr. Favor. Quince, first thing in the morning, you and Scarlet dig the grave. Yes, sir. No sign of anybody out there. Pete, how much tracking could you do at this time of night? Hardly any. Well, I'll make a marker. What name shall I put on it? She didn't say. Nobody ought to be laid to rest without a name. The Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Wish, how do you think she got shot, anyway? Oh, probably a stray. It was a rifle slug. Didn't go very deep, so it was nearly spent. What was that? Sound like a baby. Oh, not out here. Let's find it. Just squat there, pick it up. Uh, oh, uh, pick it up. No, you, you pick it up, Wish. <laughs> What's the matter? I don't know, it's just a little. So that's what you wanted us to hunt for last night. Is it all right? Well, don't ask me. 
No. No. Sounded healthy enough. She must have seen our fire and not had enough strength to carry it on in. Well, at least she tried to put it where the snakes and coyotes wouldn't get it. Hey, Pete, you, you better try and backtrack that woman. You come on back when you can. Right. Hey, now, you fellas. Who's going to take this thing? Now, Mr. Faber, who's going to take care of this thing? Oh, no, not me. I got to draw the line somewhere. Oh, I wish Bone too young to be riding a horse. <laughs> oh, no, now, absolutely not. I got every extra job there is now. Well, which one? The way I figure, you're the only man in this whole outfit who's smart enough to be able to handle a thing like that. Mr. Favor, I don't mind being the blacksmith or even the barber, but there's one thing I'm not, and I'm not going to be, and that's a mother. Now, you take this cub right now. Well, we'll drop it off at the next town. The next? Well, that's two weeks from now. Mothers did. Fathers did, too, probably. But we'll find someone to take it off your hands. Off of my hands in two weeks. You get somebody else to take this right now. No! Say, which? What kind is it, anyway? Boy or girl? It's a boy. <laughs> Congratulations. I don't know the first thing about taking care of babies. And I'm not going to start learning at my age. No, sir. That's one thing I'm not going to do. Here, you take it. Sure, Mr. Wishbone. No, no. I wouldn't wish you on anything. Not even this. Tracked her for two or three miles, found a dead horse. Couldn't find any sign beyond that. Ground's all rocky and hard. Hey! How's everything? You can't see it. Oh, come on, Wishbone, have a heart. I've been out on a long ride. All right, one quick. Enough. Not a rider in sight. Yeah. Too many head to be wild stock. Yeah. Like making a gold strike. It's an arrowhead brand. Yeah, I never heard of it. Looked at the trail map this morning. There's no ranch, no town, no nothing around here. I don't walk off and leave this many heads in the middle of nowhere. Not the ranches. Well, we'll throw them in with our herd. The owner comes along, we can cut them out for him. Yeah, Captain. Ah. This'll be booming in a short while, boys. 
Get everything ready. You still doctoring him, Reese? How's the shoulder, Harry? Still bleeding. Another couple of inches over, and we'd have buried you, too. Weren't such a good idea to pick J.B. Kincaid to jump. The other still be alive if we hadn't. We had no choice. He had the sick cattle. Anyway, we don't have to bother about him anymore, do we? Well, what's eating you, Reese? Oh, why'd you have to wait until I was out of camp before you went on that raid? I didn't want you with us. Why not? Figured you might be crazy enough to try and take him all by yourself. Well, I just thought might maybe I could. J.B. Kincaid? But his reputation don't scare me none. <laughs> yeah, well, it did me. You're always boasting how fast I am. Not that fast. As it was, we left three out of 15 men at his ranch and four more needed doctrine. No, sir, I can't afford to run the risk of losing you. Reese, you're the only family I got. Besides, the next move is yours anyway. Yeah, the trail herd picked up those sick cattle just like we planned. He ought to be ripe just about now. So get ready to pay him a little visit. Wait a minute, all the real doing's gonna be right here. That herd has got to be set up. Oh, I don't feel like play acting a part of no gun hand just for some stupid trail boss. Well, they aren't all so stupid. You might just have a little more to do than play acting. Trail boss? No. Nope. Well, who is? Mr. Fowler! Howdy. I'm J.B. Kincaid. Your favor. Name mean anything to you? Yeah, I reckon it does. Wood gets around. Here, uh, you got a few men to your credit. Well, that's all in the past now. I've turned to rancher. I had 50, 60 head of cattle up there on the trail. Arrowhead brand? Well, how did you know? I had a couple of men herding them. Well, we seen your steers, Mr. Kincaid, but uh, there's nobody with them. You saw them? I thought they'd run off. I have my boys cut them out for you. We picked them up. You picked them up? That's right. Well, mine's a sick herd, Mr. Favor. Ticks. Spanish fever. Spanish fever, they're as good as gone already. One of those steers of yours will be dead within three days unless you get them dipped. Ready! Quids! Scarlet! Ash! Cut out those arrowhead brands. They got the fever. Cut them out fast. I'll give them a hand. Right. I'm sorry, Mr. Favor. You're sorry. You know what those ticks can do to a herd? In 72 hours, their tongues swell up in their mouths the size of balloons. They begin to founder and thresh around. All of a sudden, they swell up to the size of elephants. That's when they keel over and die. 72 hours from now, I got 3,000 carcasses on my hands, and you're sorry. I had no idea. I didn't know it was that bad. I mean, they're just little ticks, as far as I you knew. You left a herd with Spanish fever all alone. I told you I left two men with them. I had no idea they'd run off and leave the cattle. You must have known more about Spanish fever than you did. 72 hours from now, I ought to make you watch those cattle go down. I ought to force you to watch them. It would make you crawl away. Look, I had no choice. I rode on ahead to the Dangerfield dips to arrange to have my cattle dipped. That's the only way to save them, ain't it? Seems to me that a thousand miles around here, all the cattle got ticks. Mine didn't. Till now. Checking our steers. And? You can see a one without ticks.
Like my steers have got 72 hours before they get dipped. I sure wish I could do something, Mr. Favor. You can. Show me where that danger field dip is. How far off is it? Well, it's about 20 miles. You can make it in three days. Three days is the most we got. Spanish fever can act in two days in the heat. And it's hot. Get him up! Move him up! You spread near here, Mr. Kincaid? About 10 miles north. You must have been built recently. That's right. Hey, uh, you know, a good looking woman, dark haired, about uh, 35. What's her name? Huh? I say, what's her name? We don't know. I'd like to meet a good looking woman. We uh, buried this one recently. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, she left her baby with us, fed it down in the chuck wagon. Just thought you might know his kin. Oh, I wouldn't be likely to forget a good-looking woman if I'd seen her. Just a hope. Right through the middle. Mr. Kincaid, he sure makes an impression, don't he? Not on me, he don't. Any man can ignore a handsome baby like this. Just don't stand high in my regard. I guess he's as good as his reputation. Mm. Miss A.P., how far you figured this Dobie Wells? It's about 30 miles. Mm. All right. I want you to write into Dobie Wells, ask around. If you can't find any kin, we'll find somebody who knew the family and take care of the baby. Wishbone! Mr. Favor, I've been thinking. Hmm? My steers are in with your herd. I like to pull my own weight. I'd like to take a turn right night herd. Fair enough. Uh, Pete's got the first guard. You can take over from him at 10. Well, uh... Yeah? I was wondering. Mm -hmm. I ain't much sleepy right now. If it's all the same to you, I'll take the first turn. Suit yourself. There's three steers it takes them about finished, Mr. Faber. Well, we're just lucky it wasn't 50. Shoot him. Get him underground as quick as you can. Yes, sir. Mr. Wishbone, you can't feed this milk to the baby. Why not? Well, the cow's got ticks. It's got the fever, just like the rest of the herd. You sure? Yes, sir. You can go check the cow yourself. What do we do? Well, there's one thing we can't do, is bother Mr. Faber about it. He's got enough problems. Well, your mother knew so much about the powder, maybe she knew something about this. Sugar water. Well, all right, we'll give it a try. Maybe after Ash gets back, it won't be our worry no more. Mr. Kincaid, anything happened? No, no, Mr. Favor just changed his mind. He doesn't want you to ride to Dobie Wells.
You looking for me? Well, yeah. I couldn't find you. I figured maybe your horse spooked and threw you. <laughs> no. I spotted a coyote trail on the edge of the herd, so I drove him off into the hills. You. I'll be glad to get to my blanket roll tonight. most of the night for lack of milk. My milk cow's got ticks. Sure wish we knew where we could get some clean milk. Hey, there's some out on the prairie. Are you talking in riddles, Pete? No, I mean it, Wishbone. I cut fresh buffalo sign on the way in here. How far was that, Pete? About two miles. Wishbone, you tell that baby milk's about ready to be delivered. And, uh, where are you going? Oh, uh, I figured on milking me a buffalo cow. You what? Yeah, well, uh... Well, uh, look, we're moving this herd along in an hour. You figure you got time to find a buffalo and milk it? Eat your morning meal and uh, be ready to kick this uh, herd along in an hour? Well, I... I figured on passing on the morning meal. Well, uh, as long as you're ready when we are. You mean as long as uh, Mama Buffalo's ready? <laughs> now listen, all of you. We've got to get these steers dipped by tomorrow, or we don't have a steer left. Now once we mount up, you're going to stay in those saddles if I got to tie you in until we reach the Dangerfield dip. The only rest you're going to get from now until then is when the herd needs it. All right, Wishbone. Beat him up. Line up. supposed to milk that buffalo, not wrestle it. I seen less beat up things come out from under a rock. <laughs> Ash is dead. How? Oh. Gunshot. His gun wasn't even out of his holster. Any idea who did it? No, I don't got any idea who did it. A lot of tracks around there, though. You may Pete may be able to track them down for you. No. Well, we can't just forget about it. We'll have to for now. After the kettle are dipped, we can find out what happened. The trail's gonna be cold by then. And the kettle'll be dead by then, unless we keep kicking him along. And we need every drover.
Give him a hand. Why he get his horse? I trailed my wife to your camp. There was a woman came into our camp a little while back. My wife. She had her baby. Where is she? Oh. Ready. Who are you, mister? My name is Kincaid. It's not too common a name. We've already got a man here who says his name's Kincaid. Who, him? Did he call himself Kincaid? J.B. Kincaid, that's what he said. He's a liar and a murderer. You heard the man accuse you. What do you say? I'm Reese Dangerfield. This bunch raided my ranch. Arrowhead brand cattle? Mine. Do you know that herd was sick? Went to Dangerfield and his brother wanted my cattle dipped. They propositioned me to use them to infect a big trail herd. I turned them down and they raided me to get my cattle. Where's my wife? She did. Let me kill him! He killed my wife! Where's my baby? He's in the supply wagon, alive and well. Wishbone, show him. You must have killed Ash. You left the herd last night. I couldn't find you. I told you I was chasing a coyote. He lied about his name. He lied about killing Ash, too. Mister, you're going to swing. We're not the ones to swing anybody. Yeah, your boss is the only one with any brains. Anything happens to me, you can forget about your herd getting to Sedalia. Keep talking. Well, uh, Dangerfield Dip is the only one within 200 miles. If we don't agree to dip your cattle, they're going to die. Now, you figure just how agreeable my brother's going to be if anything happens to me. We'll take real good care of him, then. His being healthy may be the only way to save the herd. And don't let Kincaid near him. At least until I get back. Where are you going? I think I'm going to let you ride in that rattlesnake nest alone, and you've forgotten how good at pulling fangs I am. Well, pull yourself together. I'll get the horses. Yeah. Well, Only take a minute. Welcome to Dangerfield Dips. I'm you in Dangerfield. Your favor, this is Rowdy Yates. I've got a sick herd. Uh, how much dipping for ticks? Our rates are reasonable, Mr. Favor. It's not what I asked. How much? Well, why don't you bring your herd in? We'll make a tally, and I'll give you an exact figure. Tally's up to 3,000 head, give or take a few, uh, plus 50, 60 arrowhead steers. Charge is 500 head. Oh, uh, you call that reasonable? Figure it this way. You give us the 500 head, you end up with 2,500. If you don't give us the 500 head, <laughs> you end up with nothing. Well, Mr. Dangerfield, that sounds uh, pretty close to robbery. I'll give you a fair price. You'll give me 500 head. <laughs> Mr., you haven't got a thing to say about this. There isn't another dip within 200 miles. So I've heard from your brother. What about him? Oh, he's with us for a while. What have you done to him? Just found out his name wasn't Kincaid is all. Uh, we're taking real good care of him. You're lucky. So far. You roughhouse him, and you and your friend here won't ever get over it, I promise you. We don't want to roughhouse him. What do you want? You planted a herd full of Spanish fever on the trail. It infected my herd. I want him clean. All right. What about my brother? You get him back after the herd is dipped. I'll dip your herd as soon as you bring Reese to me. You get your brother back after the herd is dipped. Regular charge, five cents a head. 
All right, five cents a head, it's a deal. You and that's throwing ten thousand dollars away. Well, you got what you came for, now go on back and bring your herd in. Now, we have got this straight, haven't we? We don't deposit Reese with you until uh, after the last head has been dipped. Mr. Favor, I don't have to like this, but I have got it straight. Bye. <laughs> All right, it won't do you any good to stand there looking at me like that. They got my brother, my stupid, idiotic brother. And I think a lot more of him than any of you think I ought to, don't I? Well, I'll handle it. You just let me handle it, and nobody will suffer. Not you, or me, or my brother. Unless he does something crazy, and even then, I won't let him suffer. Somehow, I'll find a way to make it right for him. For all of us. That roving eye on Kincaid. Make sure you don't tear our gun loose. Meat, they're slowing up real bad. We're going to lose a lot of cattle right here if we don't ease up. Yeah, they're beginning to flounder. We'll have to rest them for a while, but only for a short spell. his mother around the eyes. She had beautiful eyes. That idiot Reese coming in here using your name. They sure must have figured they killed you, too. When I sent Helen and the baby off, there was a lot of smoke and fire. Bellied out the back door into a root cellar. They were so interested in me, they didn't notice Helen and the baby had gone. Where's your gun belt, Mr. Kincaid? You lose it in the raid? Give it away when I got married. Well, no offense meant, but J.B. Kincaid without a gun is... Your name is J.B. Kincaid. You can't afford to let people know you're walking around without a gun. That don't make good sense. Hmm. Seem to make good sense. I don't know now. Well, your shoes, I guess I wouldn't know either. I miss my wife, Wishbone, and I miss her bad. I'm grateful the baby's alive, but I miss my wife. Oh, now, hold on, Mr. Kincaid. These things can be used right, or they can be used wrong. But you're not using it in either case. Mr. Favor's orders. Now, I'll take my gun back. I need it more than you do, Wishbone. No, sir. I got to ask you for my gun. Wishbone, if I have to, I'll beat you down, or I'll kill you. You gonna shoot me down in front of everybody? In spite of what Mr. Favor said? I don't mind so much that your brother and his people burned me out and shot me up. But my wife was shot up so bad she died. You owe it to Mr. Favor to not do this, Mr. Kincaid. I owe my wife more. Give him a gun. None of these drovers wants to lose their herd. That's exactly what'll happen if they let you kill me. How about it, boys? You want to get your herd to the dip alive, like Mr. Favor said? You, give him a gun. Nobody gives him a gun. What do you mean? You gave him yours, didn't you? Give it to him. I didn't give him my gun. He worked it away from me. Now, you give him your gun, and you're going against Mr. Favor's orders, Joe Scarlett. You going to do that? No. There's only one man here I want to kill. 
Maybe we better do what he says. Give it to him. Cut him loose. Just let me get the blood back in my hands. Get it working good. You know, it's not like my brother to let a job go unfinished. I'd have to remember to ask him how come you to get away. Pick up the gun. I hate to take advantage of you like this. You being so beat up. He's dead. It had to be done. That's your gun. What were you doing, Scarlett? Looking down Kincaid's gun barrel. There was nothing any of us could do. Who did it? Me, Mr. Faber. Who let him have a gun? He got hold of mine. The boss's orders, how'd you let a thing like this happen? Why, all the fuss. A man who didn't deserve to live is dead, that's all. For any of you who don't know what this means, we were gonna be seen safely through the dip because he was alive and well. He's no longer alive and well. Due to me. Whether due to you or not, we no longer have a bargain. Yeah, well, we don't have to let the man back there know that. I'm not gonna bargain with a dead man. Why not? Where the herd's concerned, I think I would. I made a deal for a live one. A man's only as good as his word. I'll keep my bargain. Now, you can come with me or not. Are you going to tell you and Dangerfield his brother's dead? Just that. Boy, I think you're wrong, but I'm going with you. For your sake. For my sake? You're going to need all the help you can get, boss. Seems I've caused a lot of trouble. Is there anything I can do to help? Mr. Kincaid. Best take yourself and your son. Move on. What we have to do no longer concerns you. I'd do that, Mr. Favor, but how? How'd I get food for Jimmy on my own? The two of us have got to stay with the drive until you reach the next town. That's no lie. Oh. Get yourself into the supply wagon and stay there. That's an order. Charlotte, Quince, get him on the ground. Get that herd to the dip and fast. Our 72 hours is just about up. All right. Now don't you cause any more trouble. Now you and that, that son of yours get in the wagon. The back end of the wagon. Awful fast, Mr. Favor. Change your mind about our deal? My uh, mind's been changed for me. Mm -hmm. It has? Your uh, brother's dead. Who killed him? It happened. I guess you can say I'm responsible. Yeah. You're responsible, but who did it? You! No. After the dip and I'll show you where we buried him. A half hour ago, you were going to give me my brother. Now you're going to give me a grave. After the dipping. You think it goes on like nothing happened? Your price was 500 head. With my brother alive. But now with him dead, the price goes up. Name it. Half the herd. You got no choice. You got no choice? You got a choice. You got 20 men on their way here just itching to back you up. When they get through with you people, there won't be enough of you left to be thinking about a herd. Ramrod's a hothead trail, boss. Ramrod pulled the trigger on my brother? No, he was here with me when it happened. You got a deal. Hold it, trail boss. You're staying here. Ramrod can bring the cattle in. Bring the herd in, Roddy. They only got a couple of hours before they start dropping. Boss, you just can't walk off.
He's too smart to think we'll let him live. Smart. Fool. Fool thinks more of his cattle than his own skin. Try anything foolish when we reach the dip. No matter how much I think of the boss, we gotta get these cattle through. Ewan, there they come. All right, take your spots. Yeah, boss. Get up in that wagon box. Stand on the seat. Four. So you'll be in plain sight of your men. They'll know if they try anything, you'll make a perfect target. Now get up there. Give me your guns. What are you doing, mister? You just try and take them, mister. Mr. Favor, maybe you can make them listen? That wasn't part of the deal. It is now. If you want that herd dip, I got to have the guns. How about it, boss? Give them your guns. All right, get the rest of them. Mistake having us turn in our guns. Maybe. He must think one of us got an ace up our sleeves. I sure hope we have. What's going to happen when we finish? Hurry him through. About a dozen more. Then what's going to happen, Mr. Wishbone? What's going to happen to us? Well, don't count on us getting past the dip. Get all those drovers and line them up over here. All right, off your horses. Get over there. Come on, move. The rest of you, too. Over there. Line up over there. All right. Pick out your half. I'm gonna pick something else first. The man who gunned Reese. Now, who was it? None of them. Get over there. 
Now, which one of you killed my brother? The man who points him out saves his own life. Well! My patience is about to run out. I give the word, my men will cut you all down. Then I'll be sure and get the one who shot Breeze. Now, who was it? Who was it? Mr. Paver left me in charge. I'm responsible. Now, you had nothing to do with it, Pete Nolan. It was my gun. And I'm the one who fired it. Kincaid! You're the one I wanted, Ewan. Cut him down! That's enough. Kincaid doesn't want to kill anybody else. You heard Mr. Favor. I'm satisfied. But I don't know how long the feeling is going to stay with me. Yes, Ewan owes me this much. Buggy and a team. Now, come get some of these blankets. We want that baby kept comfortable. Say, uh, who gave you the gun this time? Reese's gun. Found it in the supply wagon with his gun belt. And, uh, uh you? Oh, you forgot the one that never comes off me except when I bathe. <laughs> oh, when we, uh, sell the herd in Sedalia, you want us to send your share from the cattle, uh, on into Stanton? Me and the baby will be staying with my sister for a while. Well, thank you. Thank you for everything. I'm sorry for all the trouble I made you, Mr. Favor. You more than made up for it, Mr. Kincaid. Hey, v. Now you take good care of J.B. Jr. Boy, his name ain't gonna be J.B. Jr. Gonna change it to J.W. James Wishbone Kincaid. Yes, sir. James Wishbone Kincaid. It's a proud and handsome name. I'm sure glad to get that brat off my hands. Now I can stop being a mother. Get him up! Move! That Indian pack training us. I got a good look at their leader. Here. Mm. He looks white. That's astonishing. A white man leading a pack of red savages. Looks white. That doesn't necessarily mean he is. Chiricahua. You sure about that? Oh, why? Chiricahua mean anything special to you? 
Yeah. Something special. Yeah. It's about time I pick me off on them miserable Chiricahuas. Hold it, Jennings. Put the gun up. And what are we supposed to do? Sit on our hands while they take pot shots at us? If they wanted to hit us, they'd have done it by now. Well, I'm not going to give them the chance. You'll do as you're told. Now we'll make camp at that butte over there. Chiricahua. Oh, poor Chiricahua. Been trailing us for three days. If you're hungry, I can let you have a couple head. Chiricahua want white men cattle they take. Uh, well, I've got 11 drovers. You got six, seven men. We'll fight you if you want, but you'll happen not have enough men to drive out one steer. I'm Jacob, yellow sun, Chiricahua chief. My warriors do not fear death. Didn't think the Chiricahua had any white chiefs. I'm only part white, trail boss. Part stupid, too. That shot you fired could have stampeded the whole herd. Maybe that's what I planned, trail boss. You planned that? It could have come this way. You ever seen a man that's been run over by 3,000 head of cattle? So trail boss ride out because he pities poor Chiricahua. Does not want old men and squaws to starve. I can help keep you from starving by offering you and your men work. You help drive the herd as far as the Little Red. I'll pay you off in cattle. You and your village. Chiricahua's warriors, not squaws, drive cattle. Well, it's the only way you'll get any cattle out of me. It'll be moving out in an hour. I'll uh, expect to hear your decision. I say it's crazy. They're vermin. Filthy vermin. I know these Chiricahua. You let them hook on with us and you might just live to regret it. Anybody else just loaded with things to say? Well, let me tell you. Every one of those steers we don't get to market is money out of my pocket. Your pockets. Now, with those Indians riding with us, we'll get there faster and safer. And we'll have them where we can keep an eye on them. Jim? Well, there's bound to be something in what Jennings and Wishbone says. How do you know you can trust them? I don't know that. I'm just telling you where I stand. For all I know, that half-breed's already scratched the idea. All right. Well, Purdy, you and Kenny take the first night guard, and Jackson Cabot there will relieve you for chow. <laughs> Take a look coming off that ridge. All right, everybody, just stand easy.
come, trail boss. Yellow Sun will help white men drive cattle to water. Yates will give Chiricahua many cattle. Yeah, I'll be fair. Son, the Chiricahua chief. Mm. Your men can put the rifles in the wagon here. As soon as you tell your men to do so, Mr. Trail Boss. Mm. All right, all rifles in the wagon now. Yes, sir. Jacob, I'm running this outfit, and what I say goes. When I want your men to do something, I'll tell you, and you can pass it on, right? Whatever you say goes, Mr. Trail Boss. Wishbone, make sure there's enough food for everybody. You making that an order? That's right. No, Yates, we make our own fires, cook our own food. All uh, right, get supplies uh, out of the chuck wagon, whatever you need. Any more orders for poor Chiricahua, Mr. Trail Boss? No, we'll just move out after we eat. Mm. Mr. Yates. Yeah. The yellow son looks like a man who knows where he's going. Meaning what? Meaning you and him could be running the same trail, but to different places. Look, right now I need him, Simon. If the devil himself walked into this camp and asked to ride drag, I'd shake his hand and put him on a horse. see a man whose skin is as white as the men he says he hates. I know what is in Yellow Sun's face, but I do not know what is in his heart. Drink it alone, Mr. Yates? Paying the call, is all. Thought oh, you'd like some coffee. Pick up white man's ways, mission school. Mission school, huh? You must be mostly... Trail boss afraid to speak truth? I'm mostly white. 
Only one grandmother, Indian. Chiricahua, chief's daughter. It's enough in place where I was born. From time I'm two years old, I think my name is Indian Brat. That's all I hear. So I come to live with Chiricahua, where I'm man. Mr. Yates, Jacob, yellow son, dirty Indian. Did your shoulder ever get tired? Carrying that chip around on it all the time. You must spend half your time looking for a fight. When I'm near a white man, yes. <laughs> Seems to me you gotta judge a man by what he is. This man, Simon. He's a friend of yours? Yeah, that's right. Hey! Get out of there! What do you think you're doing in my barrel? Oh, I do. It's not gonna be any time at all I caught one. These dogs are rode with us far enough. I say we string this one up before they get a hand all the way. What's the trouble here? I caught this one thieving. You sure? Look at his hands. He was halfway in my flower barrel. Well, boss, say, all right. Yellow sun, show her Chiricahua punish thief. Chiricahua hate thief. But we are kind. First time we cut off one ear. All it. Yellow sun, forget. Quail boss job, punish Chiricahua here. Chiricahua not cry out. Knife sharp. Mr. Yates, feel pity for Chiricahua thief. Bring that uh, barrel here, will you? Now the show's over. Every man who's not on night guard, get some sleep, because we're moving out first thing in the morning. I didn't go looking for trouble. I know that. Well, then you know the trouble comes looking for a man sometimes. Another thing you ought to know is that Cherokee would have far rather had you cut off both ears than to have you shame him like you did. Yeah, that's right. That's why I did it my way. Mr. Simon. Just Simon will do. You could be a man among us, among the Chiricahua. Yet you work for the white man. Why? You're no longer a slave. I never was. Maybe I'm learning the cattle business from the ground up so I can uh, own my own ranch. I have more questions. Ask away. Trail boss Yates, he is tall and strong on the outside. But on the inside, I think he's soft, like a squall. How can such a man beat other men? He is so weak. Weak? Quiet, maybe. But don't go confusing that with weakness. Your words honor him. He honors me. If you're planning anything, and I say it, if you are, don't cut on Mr. Yates throwing his hand in. Seems to me that man's supposed to be riding further up toward the point. son has remembered he is a Chiricahua. Perhaps he will accompany Quadera to our village. There will be many cattle to butcher, many hides to tan. Quadera has forgotten Yellow Sun is chief. It is Yellow Sun who has forgotten he is chief. The lion has wedded the eagle. 
And the offspring does not know whether to run with the lion or fly with the eagle, so he does nothing. Quadero has eaten of the dark mushroom. His words are without sense. How long will Yellow Sun let his brothers be treated like dogs? No one is treated like a dog. We'll do the white man's bidding until I say we do not. How long do we do the white man's bidding? How long? Believe me, I believe the point of my knife. There's no disgrace to die at the hands of a chief. Is Quadero ready to die? Back to the herd. I have spoken. Yellow Sun has spoken. Where's he going? Back to the herd. Yeah, and you? Mr. Trail Boss, have nothing better to do than watch poor Chiricahua. Are not cattle more important than filthy Indians? I asked you where you're going. Maybe to lie down, rest. Maybe to hunt up some more of your tribesmen. White man believe what he wish, but white man not own Indians. I told you when we first started, there's only one boss to this outfit. Maybe I forgot. Jacob! Maybe I'd better refresh your memory. Hmm? No fight to death. I'm disappointed, trail boss. of seeming to hit with the left hand when you hit with the right. I remember from mission school. I remember much. Hey, yellow son! What do you need? Uh, them Indians are his. They won't cut flank unless he gives them the orders. You heard him. Get your men working. Sure, Mr. Trail Boss. While we enjoy ourselves, your cattle may be stampeding. But Maybe we fight again sometime. Anytime. Six handed straight off in that brush. I want you to keep a closer watch now, you hear?
raise the rifle, old man. This knife would find its mark long before you could shoot. Hold the rifle down. Perhaps you have run all out of time, Mr. Cook. You go to great trouble to track Chiricahua, but in your hatred you forget Chiricahua best trackers. Fortunate for you, you did not find them. You're too easy. Maybe I should make you run. See how straight this rifle shoot at a hundred yards. You won't make me run. I did not think so. You're a fool, but brave. Here, Yellow Sun does not make war upon the old. And you're not going to kill me. Tell me, Mr. Cook, the white men think of Indians as dogs. Oh, they pity them, which is worse. But hatred such as yours, I do not understand. Why? I want to hear. Well, it goes back a long piece. I was just nine years old when I saw my little brother butchered in a Cherokee raid. I, too, lost a brother. Killed by the white men. But I do not hate you, old man. Your friends come to look for you. Mr. Cook came out to help me find the strays. It's very kind of him, but I tell him he's needed to make that good coffee for the men when they come in from the herd. When I need your help, I will call for you. Good Mr. Yates said that those rifles were to be in the wagon. Good are you two? Some kind of a posse or something? No wish. But Mr. Yates can't be everywhere all the time. Wet nurses, you mean. Well, you two can just get on back to whatever you were doing. Whatever I might have had in mind isn't there anymore. bring all strays back to her. Oh, Chiricahua did a good job first time. Herd cattle, no? Yeah. To reach the Little Red in the morning, as far as our deal takes us. Your village near enough to drive the cattle to? There's gonna be ten extra head. Oh, I'm sorry. There's no way of me getting out of saying that you poor Shirakawa did a good job. Considering it's the first time out, of course. water tomorrow. The stream the white men call Little Red. Chiricahua must stampede the cattle. Slaughter white enemy. What plan has Yellow Sun? Quadero is a coyote. When Quadero barks, coyotes bay at the moon. Be careful, Yellow Sun. This careful. Who is it here who questions my right to lead? When the time comes for you to know, I will tell you my plan. Not before. Oh. 
all the boys over here one, two at a time. Kind of like nothing's happening. Goodness, it'll save me from another cup of coffee. How use to breed a habit in man. Two gentlemen of Verona, Act Five, Scene Four. What do you think we're going to reach water? Figure about sun up, maybe an hour later. Well, if they're going to start anything, it'll probably be at the river. I wish uh, if the boys the rifles out. so far? Oh, about half, maybe a little over. You know, it's a funny thing, Roddy. What? Other than Cherikawas. You know, they're doing exactly what they're supposed to. And? Nothing. That's what I don't like about it. They're going to start something. What are they waiting for? 58. Ambush. There must be 20 or more of them. that it makes very much different which tribe gets our scouts. The fact is, we're still outnumbered. The Pawnee hate the Cherokees worse than they hate us. Those two tribes are blood enemies. I think we're about ready to find out. Mr. Creel, boss, this is none of my doing. I believe that. Look, we kept faith with you. Will you and your men help us fight off the Pawnee? No. We will not kill Indians for sake of white men. I don't have to remind you that you got a lot of white blood in you. Too late for that kind of talk, Mr. Yates. Go tell that to the town that drove out my mother. I will remember you kept faith. Well, it's going to take them a few minutes to figure out what we're doing. Meantime, maybe we can make a stand up in those rocks there. Jim, you and Simon get down the river, start dragging the boys back, but make it look like it's regular routine, huh? Ian, I tail it back and get Wishbone. Get him to get the wagon up there on those rocks. It was Quadero who brought the pony here. It was not hard to make the pony follow a single Chiricahua. Let them kill each other off, the pony and the white men. The Chiricahua will be the gainers. No man gains from treachery. What does Chief Yellow Sun decide now? Well, what does Quadero suggest? These cattle are ours to take. Take only part of the herd? If Quadero's plan work, we need only wait. Take all.
this ruckus you got going here? No ruckus even for you, Wish. Come out the hill. Quint, Simon. They're coming in, and I guess they figure we're the only ones they got to worry about. Jennings was right. You can't trust them Chiricahua. Well, if we came across a battle between whites and Indians, who would we side with? Yeah, I figure there's about 20 of them. That's better than two to one. How's our ammunition? Not too good. Oh, good luck. Well, I have to do it. Up the hill. Down there. Quadero says we can have many cattle, much meat. But the taste will be bitter. We gain honor in the death of our enemies. The honor of coyotes and thieves. That way lies honor. That way lies death. Well, then we die as men. When honor is gone, nothing remains. It's better to die in battle against the Pawnee than to live as coyotes. My brothers, we can win this battle. We can win glory that will live long after we are dust. Death to the Pawnee! Act!
be about as close to a miracle as our little group of sinners is liable to come to. Son does his people proud. And I'd like to shake Yellow Sun's hand. It's welcome, Mr. Cook. The past is dead. Dead and buried. The bite of a coyote is sharp. Don't try to talk. I'll get you fixed up right away. Oh, I'm no child. I die, I know. Yates, I had more white blood in me than I knew. Wish. No, I die. It is my time. If we fight again, I... This time, my eye would follow that trick of your left hand. I think... Maybe I win. Maybe. Mr. Wishbone. Your coffee is the best I ever drink. Thanks. Let's take a few of the boys and help them cut out their cattle. steer could ask for, don't you? Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, I guess that's what you did say, Pete. You getting hard of hearing? No. You know, a couple days in grass like this are gonna put 10 pounds on those beeves. Yeah, I better go tell Mr. Davis. No, you don't. Listen, I have told him about flooded streams, burned up grass, dried up water holes. He's even getting away running through of hide when he sees me coming. Well, he's due for some good news for a change, and I'm gonna take it to him. <laughs> Rowdy or Pete? Oh, not for quite a while, boss. I'm still kind of hanged over from that keg you let Wishbone open last night. I haven't been looking for Pete or Rowdy or nobody. Huh? In fact, I was kind of hoping I couldn't even see me. Gypsy, you think you could carry out an order for once if I gave it to you? Well, what's the order, Mr. Faber? Right flank for Quince. Keep it in the strays. You think you can do it? Sure, why not? Let's go, Jim. 
I don't see nothing no more. Jack's disappeared all of a sudden. Shouldn't, this kind of ground. They've been brushed. No place to go. No place to set out to from here. Might as well get back to the herd. That's where Rowdy and Pete will show up, if they're able. Yeah, I guess so. I guess we'll have to get back to the herd and wait. That's the trail boss coming in now, Lieutenant. Better tell him. Mr. Faber, Lieutenant Meadows. Fourth Cavalry, Mr. Faber. Lieutenant? I thought I'd better warn you, sir. An Indian named White Eyes just came off the reservation with a Kiowa war party. You better keep an eye out. He's ready to go after anybody who's got white skin. We'll do that. Obliged for the warning. Can't the Army hold that half-breed? Uh, we've had enough chains on him to hold a buffalo. You see, he got sick. The Indian agency sent him home to die. Well, that was their mistake. He wasn't anywhere near dying. As a matter of fact, he's all around us right now. He's got enough Kiowas to wipe us all out if he feels like it. Does he feel like it? I'm afraid White Eyes is the only man who can answer that question. I'll ask him when I run into him. Uh, Lieutenant, uh, two of my men disappeared. We followed their tracks till they gave out, but it seems they had been brushed out. Uh, how long has it been since you've seen your men? Twelve hours. We'll do our best to see if we can get them back for you, if they can be got back. Anything me and my men could do to help? No, that's what the Army's for, Mr. Faber. Look, I've got to keep this herd moving, but the men that are missing, well, they're good men. Well, we'll do our best, Mr. Faber. <laughs> Bit, Lieutenant, if he knew half as much as White Eyes, he'd be a general. What do you know about this White Eyes? Well, he's part white. At least wise he ain't all Indian. He used to tear up the country, raiding, murder, killing anybody he can. And things. We'll bed the herd down. You, Scarlet, and Bailey get working at it. Well, Mr. Favor, are you uh, fixing to let the Army locate Pete and Rowdy? We'll move the herd out in the morning. I figured you'd say that. You figured it right, Jim. So let's get working at it. soldiers have gone to the great herd that moves. Now the horse soldiers chase rainbows. It is a pursuit they will tire of. We must act quickly. We must not act quickly. Oh, you have a reason why we must not. You are the reason. The white skins in the prison made it difficult for me to go on living. That is for all to see. Whether you understand it or not, Uncle. I must leave. You will crawl back to your own? Would you have it otherwise? I would not give in. I would fight until none of us was left to fight. These are your people. Would you have them killed? I would do more for them than you are doing. I would stay with them. I would not leave them. Even though the white man had made me sick, I would not leave as you are leaving. I understand you. Because I understand, I will not name you chief to follow me. You live out of your heart. Your heart is not guided by wisdom. What I do will bring peace. You do not want that. 
My people will do what is planned. I have heard you, and I will obey you. But let it be known that I believe you are wrong. I think that death will come to our people because of you. Is there one here who doesn't understand what I mean? We have very little time. I want to. As long as you are alive, they will do as you say. Will that make you happy? I have outlived my happiness. All that remains is to do what must be done. Help me to my feet. You cannot stay on your feet. Strength is a thing one must rise up and meet. It will not come to you when you're lying down. Let me take care of you. Let me put you down gently on a bed of reeds. Let me run and fetch for you. Let me be near you. My people do not believe it. But unless something is done, the whites will swallow us. You do not trust us. We are Kiowas, and you still do not trust us. It has not made any difference all these years. You are not as you say. You are not Kiowa. You are white. You will help me to my horse. You will see a Kiowa ride away. Break it up. Double guard tonight in case the car would try for the herd. I want the search party out before daylight. The rest of you turn in. Won't do no good. They're dead. Death card. Indians killed them. Don't let him spook you. He don't know nothing from cards. How do we know the cards are wrong? They're cards, ain't they? I know Roddy and Peter are no longer alive. Oh, you do, do you? Well, tell them how you got your name, Gypsy. He's a fortune teller. At least that's what he said when he signed on. The cards know. The cards know how to scare some of the Jaspers around here. All the card says was that two men you didn't know before you signed on was going to be killed by Indians, right? It said I'd be killed, too, because of the two men. The cards say how? Somebody would fire a gun, and I would die. But not because of the gun. It's got him so spooked, he's trying to spook the rest of you for company. <laughs> See what I mean? Sure showed that gypsy, Mr. Wishbone. <laughs> sure did. Didn't I? Did you? Gypsies. Who believes in them? I do. Are you gonna get them? I know.
Tonko. The one who shot. We want him. It was a mistake. We will talk. Kiowa war chief. Tatanga. My men? They are alive. What do you want for them? Beef? North. 30, 40 miles. The soldiers search for Tatane. The army know me as an enemy of the white man. One place they will not look for me is among white men. You mean you and your men want to go along with us? If the army comes to you again, they will have no reason to inspect your men unless you give them a reason. How far do you want to go? The Black Pass. The Cheyenne Pawnee country. You won't find any friends there. I do not search for Indian friends. You are not Indian, are you? I am a dying man. If I die among those with whom I was born, the soldiers will be satisfied that the Kiowa they search for is only a white man. My people will no longer be hunted down. What about my men? Satanga will go with us. The others will return to our hostages. When I have reached Black Pass, Satanga will return and release your men. If I say no? Many of our people are hidden. You are alone. So you cannot say no. Through the patrols to Black Pass. That's all? You have my word if you keep yours. Decided who will wear it. I do hardly do that. If I wasn't here and they aren't who they are, I'd swear it was an Irish wake. Same thing, death chant for a chief. Well, the army's wasting money chasing him. He's gonna die anyway. Well, you'd better all make sure he doesn't. He's got to reach Black Pass as far as Rowdy and Peter are concerned. Put him in the supply wagon. Why should you fix a bed? Go. That done that. Where you go. I go. It has always been so. It is best this way. You don't want your two men killed, but I don't want to be killed because of them. I want my pay. You got any other reason but the cards, Gypsy? I got a right to it. All right, you'll get it. After White Eyes leaves. I can't take a chance on you spoiling things, can I? 
And after all your hoodoo talk, you'd just have to tell somebody, wouldn't you? All right, you can keep my pay. I don't want it. Gypsy! Gypsy! took off because of you. He's, he's kind of superstitious, and he might talk, talk, might get back to the army. You said it. You should have stopped him, shot him if you had to. We're doing everything we can to protect you, but we're not going to kill to do it. Now, he was that scared, he might get clean out of the country without the cavalry finding out. Two of your men will die if the troops come. Look, you're part white. Can't you understand part of our side? I am all white. And there are two more with the same blood in their veins, a brother, a sister. It is those two who must bury me and proclaim me white. Well, we both hope you make it. We'll do everything we can, but we can't figure on the cavalry not coming back. I'll send Wishbone over to cut your hair, bring you some drover's clothes. see another sunrise. He will not see another sunset. Who's Tucano? My brother. All things considered, I'm sorry about your brother. A white man is sorry that an Indian is dead? I admit it. The spirit of my dead brother thanks you. Anko, why are you here? It is time for them to die. They must be left alive, so that Tartane may travel safely north. Tartane himself is about to die. He is still your chief. He was my chief, when he rode before us, when he led us in battle. You speak like this to a woman. I would speak this way to Tartane himself. Then you will wait for him to come back. We both know he will not come back. He will come back. Then you will speak to him the way you spoke to me. You will eat. Yeah. Thanks, so. Do not thank me. When I remember what your people did to Tartane, how they hung chains on him, made him sick and old before his time, I could kill you myself. It wasn't us that did that to him. One rattlesnake is not like another rattlesnake, yet both carry death in their fangs. You have a god. Then pray to him. Pray to him that Tartane reaches his destination alive. No thanks, don't want any. First son of life we've seen in days. Yeah, he's riding up from the south. Yeah, that's kind of funny. I want him. The rider on the flats. The cow stone wants him. Split up here. Stay where you are. 
I ain't done nothing. Ain't nobody said you did. Then why are you shooting at me? Cal Stone wants to see you. Who's he? You ask him. I ain't got no time. I'm heading for town. Mister, you got plenty of time. You was riding all alone in Indian Territory. What makes you so brave? I ain't brave. I was just heading for the nearest town. I ain't interested in where you're heading for. Where are you heading from? I told you. I left a trail drive. You up and quit a trail drive in the middle of Kiowa country? Yeah. Why? Me and the trail boss, we didn't get along. You and me ain't getting along either. Look, what do you want from me? Try the truth. I'm looking for a Kiowa. A Kiowa chief. Look, all right. All right. There are two Kiowas riding with the herd. Hear any names? Only one of them. White Eyes. Why would White Eyes be riding with a herd? He's trying to avoid the cavalry patrol. And you left the drive to find the cavalry? I was afraid. It's in the fortune telling cards. What's well, in what fortune telling cards? Death. Murph, get back to the ranch. Bring Jenny. Bring her where? Where's the herd now? About two hours' ride from here. Which way are they headed? Due north. Herd can't travel more than eight miles a day. He won't have any trouble finding us. Well, where'll you be? Close to her as we can get. We'll be watching for you. Cal, you sure you want your wife around? She's got a right to see what happens to White Eyes. More than anybody else in the world, she's got a right. Give him his gun. Jenny, we don't have to wait no longer. Why did you send for me? White Eyes ain't more than a stone's throw from here. White Eyes? He's with that trail drive. Couldn't get to him in that prison. Couldn't get to him on that reservation, but I can get to him now. But I don't want to see him at all. I, I don't want to be there. I want him to see you. What good will his seeing me do? It'll remind him of what he done to your pa. He'll remember you. Especially, I want him to remember you. I never asked you to find him. You're acting like you're sorry you've done it. I am. But, Jenny, I've done it because I love you. You're doing it because you're filled with hate. You've always been filled with hate. White Eyes is just an excuse. It wasn't hate made me marry you when no other man would. Did you want a reward for marrying me? I love you, Jenny, and I shouldn't have said what I did. But that'll make no difference with White Eyes. He's gonna die, and you're gonna be there. They're making camp. Good, let's go. Mr. Stone, I don't want to go back. You're going. I told you about White Eyes. I haven't brought you to the herd. That's right. Now you're going back with us. No. Suit yourself. But if he tries to stay behind, blow him right out of that saddle. some of the boys. Yes, sir. Keep your heads down. Stone, you the trail boss? 
Your name's Favor? I understand you got a couple of coyotes riding with him. Do you see any, Mr. Stone? You, come here. You know this man? I know him. He says you're hiding a couple of coyotes. I didn't want to tell him, Mr. Faber. Tell him what? Well, you got no right hiding white eyes anyway. If I was hiding white eyes, I'd be the judge of whether it was right or wrong, wouldn't I? I don't care why you're doing it. All I want is white eyes. Well, you're a long time answering. Makes you think I'm going to answer at all. Where are they hiding? Supply wagon. All right, drag them out. Keep supplies in the supply wagon. Got any objection to my finding out if that's all you keep in the supply wagon? Plenty of objection. You'd put up a fight to save an animal that swears he'd kill up a whitey sees? I'll put up a fight to stay boss of this outfit. Jenny. Yes? Come here. Jenny's my wife, Mr. Faber. I am. You're not going to shame me before strangers, are you? I've got to show them what kind of a man they're hiding. You promise that nobody's ever look at me. Turn your face, Jenny. Look. Go on, take a good look. Well, ma'am, did White Eyes do that? Tell him. He was one of them. Now, where is he? I'm sorry for your wife, Mr. Stone. Is that all you've got to say after what you've just seen? You'd better leave now, Mr. Stone, you and your men. Good thing about a man driving a herd. You can't hide 3,000 steers. I'll be back. She could have been a real pretty woman. I saw her face. It'd be a hard face to forget. Yes. Is that all you've got to say about her? Yes. You're gonna send your man here back to your war party with orders to return with Rowdy and Pete to the herd. So that you can turn me over to the cavalry without fear of what will happen to your man. If I didn't turn you over to them, you don't have to worry about being turned over to anyone until you get to Black Pass. So, Tonga, can we trust him to Tane? Do as he says. If you betray my chief. It's going to take Stone and his men a day's hard riding to get to Fort Scott. Figure another day to get back. It's the time you've got. You better use it well. Now, get a horse from the Remuda. He is my blood brother, a good man. Yeah, but at what?
Free the white men. The great herd could not have reached the Black Pass so soon. It has not. Then why do we free the white men? Tatane has ordered it. Why does he order us to free the hostages? The chief of the great herd gave his word. Do we hold the white man's word sacred? Your orders come from Tatane, not the white man. Tatane had ordered us to fight, I would fight. If he sent orders to burn the white men, I would burn them. Those are a chief's orders. The orders he was bringing were not a chief's orders. From this day, I am chief. From this day, we are men, not frightened dogs. I hope you're right, Mr. Stone. You know, you're making a very serious accusation against the trail boss and his men. I know I'm right. This drover saw white eyes join up with the herd. My wife can identify him. Lieutenant, if you capture white eyes, two men, two white men, they'll die. I have no choice, ma'am. Well, I got one, and I ain't going back. There's death in the cards, and it ain't going to be me. Don't be a fool. Look, I faced him once, but I ain't going to face it again. <laughs> Stop that man! Fire over his head! The fall broke his neck. Taking too long. Satanga is dead. He was killed by Anko. What about my men? They were alive when I left the camp. He has made himself the new chief. He is going to lead them against the whites. He plans to get all the other tribes together. I'm taking you back to Fort Scott. You will accomplish nothing by giving a dying man to the cavalry. They cannot save your men. Then who can? Mr. Fairer. Hi, about that? Go. I'm not going to have to take you to Fort Scott. You asked who could save your men. I can. I took your word once. You couldn't help yourself then. Can you help yourself now? What about your heading north? Not any longer. There are more important things. I must go back to my people. Just to save my men? To save mine. All right, I'll go along with you. I'm sticking with the stories that White Eyes isn't with us. You men will have to decide what you want to do for yourselves. Get rid of that Indian rig on that pony. Get back here.
favor, according to the information received, I have reason to believe you're harboring a fugitive. Well, the penalty is five years for every man involved. I'd be the only one responsible if there was a fugitive here. You turn him over to me and I won't press charges. I said if there was a fugitive. Any objection to our searching your outfit? You ought to start with a supply wagon. This one! You two search the supply wagon. He was there. They must have hit him somewhere else. We're going through your entire outfit. We'll be breaking noon camp in half an hour. You've got half an hour. Are these all the men you've got? The rest are riding herd. We'll start with these. Have your men line up. You heard what the lieutenant said. I want Mrs. Stone with me. Sure, you could recognize White Eyes if you saw him again, ma'am. Will you look over these men, please? I saw all the men. None of them is white eyes. Are you sure? I'm sure. Well, it looks like there's no Indians here, Mr. Stone. Uh, maybe I was wrong. All right, if we go back to work. I'm not apologizing for wasting any of your time. I didn't expect any, Lieutenant. Goodbye, Mr. Favor. Lieutenant. Now we'll ride out and check the other drovers. Prepare to march! Murphy, take my horse. I'm riding the buggy. She didn't point you out. Perhaps she didn't remember. Yeah. Let's get going. I seen you knew him. I've known you a long while, Jenny. You can't fool me. Then why didn't you tell the lieutenant? When you didn't identify him, I knew there had to be a reason. A good reason. You don't ever have to tell me about white eyes if you don't want to. Oh, now I want to. I'm too ashamed before. Pa and some other men got drunk. Pa had to show what a big man he was. He raided white eyes village without any reason at all. The braves were away, so they killed women. Children. Jenny, don't. No, I, I have to finish, Cal. White Eyes returned, and there was a fight. The house we were in caught on fire. It was White Eyes who pulled me out of that burning house.
Some rest. He has been sick a long time. Take this. We'll help you speak to my people. Wear it. They will listen. They must not travel the paths to war. That path for them is coming to an end. Just as my path is coming to an end. It has been good. All good. Take me back to my people. Up north? The Kiowas. You killed Tatane. You were a fool to bring him here. I did not kill him. Tatane gave me this before he died. He wanted me to speak to you. The Kia was listened only to their chief. I am speaking for him. Because you wear the medallion around your neck? If a woman wore the medallion around her neck, would she then be a Kiowa chief? Is it that you are afraid of his words? Among the Kiowas, a man must win the right to speak. <laughs> said to free my men, cut them loose. Tain said the old days are over. He wanted you to return to the reservation. To live in peace. He died trying to bring you these words. They're good words.
hold this until your people select a new chief. How you feel? Uh, a lot better than I did, I'll tell you. <laughs> so do I. They're going back, looks like. Forgotten what a town looked like. I'd like to know what it is about this and prod your memory. One good spit land out in the country. Well, are you coming? Oh, yes, sir, Mr. Wishbone. What's the matter with you today, boy? You're moping around like a calf of the cock. I got a feeling in my stomach something's gonna happen. I probably already has. You must have had some of Wishbone's flannel cakes this morning. Smart Alec. Bites the hand that feeds him. You want me to come in the store and start carrying out the supplies? No, not with a colicky stomach. You just stay right here till I get some turpentine and sugar down you. Morning. <laughs> Good morning. Yes, sir. You mind your manners. And you got a deal. Well, I'll hold it for you. Well, might be safer the other way around. Oh, well, you just go ahead and take a poke at it, Reverend. <laughs> I don't know much about your judgment, but I sure like your faith. Yeah, it's fine. Well, I don't know about your faith, but I sure like your aim. <laughs> You building a new church, Reverend? Even a mighty oak must start from the humble beginnings of an acorn. Well, I ain't got much, but I'd be glad to. Oh, no, 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 thank you, son. You've done enough already. Well, I wasn't intending on spending on anything special. Then just let it jingle. Ain't nothing like a little spending silver in a man's pocket to make the day stand up and shine. Well, if you say so, Reverend. Yeah, I say so. <laughs> It was only a dollar, Lord. And besides, he looked like he needed it worse than we do.
Thank you. It's a friendly game. Sure, you in or out? We'll even let you start the deal. Well, Mr. Wishbone, he told me to be careful sitting across from a man if I gambled. But since you're a woman. Nice that you noticed. Sit down. <laughs> Thank you. Dealer's choice, five and ten limit. How many chips? Oh, I'll take that many. Play seven card stud, deuce is wild. What kind of poker is that? Well, first you deal two dollars. Nah, I know how to play. Lorelei, you're gonna put up with this. Trailblazer has a policy of dealer's choice, and uh, that's what it is. You don't mind if we skip the introductions and uh, get right to the game, do you, Hanson? Oh, no, ma'am. There'll be plenty of time for that later, after we played a few hands. Yes, it'll take about that many. Deal. Oh, yes, ma'am. One. 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 Two. 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 Crew's getting mighty hungry. Yeah, well, uh, there's jerky in the chuck wagon. Well, not anymore. We ate all that about two hours ago. Yeah, with well, Whisper not back, what are we gonna do about cooking? I'll tell you what, Scarlet. Let's see how clean your hands are, huh? Well, not me, boss. I got too many enemies already. Is going to be mad. Oh. You better stop it. <laughs> stop what, honey? We're just being neighborly. Neighborly? <laughs> Why, well, honey, you must be ticklish. <laughs> well, let go of me now. Turn me loose. Oh, well, sir, uh, you're not going to believe this. No, but you go ahead and try me anyways. Well, you see, it happened like this. Uh, we were in town and... Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell him that? Me tell him? You're the ramrod. That remains to be seen. Well? Oh, oh, uh, we got a visitor. Lorelei Mary, she's the owner of the trailblazer in town. I'll get her for you. boss, it was like this. Mushy wasn't feeling too good, so we left him in the wagon to just kind of relax while we went in and buy the supplies. Please continue. Well, then when we come out, we couldn't find him, and when we finally did, there he was with all of these women. And oh. uh, in the line, Lorelei. Well, maybe for you, cowboy, but not for me. Poker! Jumping, gee, hot, It's a gospel truth. The darn fool's gonna run himself $1,500 playing seven card stud deuces wild. Uh, $1,547 to be exact, Mr. Favor. Got any complaints to make, lady? <laughs> well, you ever heard of a loser who didn't? 
Your boys cut me off a little too soon, and all I want is a fair sporting chance to win it back. You can have all the chances you want, except not here and not now. I hope that's sporting enough. Uh, then suppose I make you a proposition. Why don't you and your boys come back to town, and I'll set up the evening. Drinks on the house, and uh, all the fun you want. How'd that sound, boys? Uh, yeah. yeah. That sounds great. Anybody wants to take her up on her offer can pick up his draw on the way out. Well, wait a minute, Trail. That's boss. just what I'm gonna do. Wait one minute, and I'm gonna start clearing camp, and I'm starting with you, lady. <laughs> Fair enough. I'll go in peace, if the big winner will keep me company. My Jane. Yes, sir, Mr. Faber. She's got an offer to quit the cattle business. You want to take it? No, sir, I couldn't leave the drive. All righty. Well, let's get moving. Wishbone needs wood for supper. Yes, sir, right away. What's that money? You want to start a stampede? Oh, you will show the lady to her horse and the road back to town. Come on, girls. Let's get out of this cow camp. Oh, and the rest of you better get moving before you get stomped on by the herd. No, Lorelei, Mr. Favor isn't all bad. He just kind of acts tough. In fact, uh, deep inside, he's got a soft spot as big as all outdoors. Then that makes you two of a kind, doesn't it? Oh, how's that? Well, you have a soft spot, too. Right between your ears. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you think you're real happy now. Oh, yes, sir. Guess I'll be happy to the end of my days. Oh, that money's gonna be nothing but trouble to you, boy. Well, that ain't right, Mr. Wishbone. Oh, we all work hard to get money, don't we? Some of us do. Now go over and get me those biscuits and hurry up. Yes, sir. What do you need, Mush? A pan of biscuits. Oh, don't bother yourself. I'll get them for you. He told me. In a pig's eye. He I'll said. get him. I'll do it. Who you asked for your help? He was talking to me. How'd you like a mouthful of knuckle bone for supper? Accident, Mr. Wishbone. They didn't do it on purpose. Well, money's supposed to be good, ain't it? Ain't supposed to. Supposed to be good. Can't split the herd on both sides of the river. Just keep moving. You're not singing this morning. I'm 
money. Got you worried? Maybe. That's one of the big troubles with having money. All that worry. Well, I never worried about it before. You never had it to worry about before. I never look at it that way. Got any plans for when you get to Denver? Buy yourself a new suit, things like that? I don't know exactly. I'll do something. Something? You'd think a man with $1,500 in his cake could have some better idea of what to do with it than something. Yes, sir. Hey, Wish, you better put keels on them wagons. You fix and take them across. That's real considerate of you to ride all the way back here just to tell me that. Now, what is it you really want? Well, nothing special. Just thought uh, maybe Mushy would let us take a gander at all that money in the daylight. How'd you like a gander and a long-handled meat chopper? Oh, don't get so huffy, Wish. How about it, Mushy? You'd like to show it to us? I can't. I got it hit away. Well, I hope you hit it real good so the rats don't get to it. Well, at least they identified themselves. Now get out of here and leave him alone. Well, all right with me if he don't care what happened. Oh, wait a minute, Mr. Quince. What about them rats? Well, they just like to chaw on money and make nests out of it and things like that. You do? I even heard of fellas having money run by water and mold. Ain't you toothless? Crumples up just like cornbread. Oh, my goodness. Well, now, uh, you, you could put it in the bank. And you just happen to have one in your hip pocket? Nope, wouldn't recommend a bank. Too risky. They're always getting robbed. Doggone, I never thought of that. Oh, I'll bet. Well, what do you think we ought to do? Well, Mushy, the only thing I know to do with money is to go into town and have one wild, hairy wingding. Well, I never did that before. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go in town and show you how. No, no, Toothless is just funning with you, Mushy. Now, the proper thing to do with that money is to invest it in a good, sound proposition. Well, what's a proposition? It's how to get your pockets picked while you're watching. Mushy, when are you gonna wake up? Well, I'll wake, Mr. Wishbone. Well, they're just trying to be helpful, that's all. Helpful? Now, I'm gonna give you one second to clear out of here before I pound you into those saddles. Now, wait a minute. It was only an idea. Get! Get out of here! And you, get that thing packed and get that wagon out of here. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs>
going to say nothing to me, Mr. Wishbone? I wouldn't mind even if you said something mean. You just wait till Mr. Faber gets back. He'll say something mean to you. Finally picked up four more. Two miles downstream off of a sandbar. Two of them were so stove in, nowhere to shoot them. Well, that's 12 we lost. Yeah. And I'm afraid I can't save much of the supplies. That figures. I would just have to make do till we hit the next town. And the wagon's pretty beat up. Well, at least that ain't gonna be no problem. Now that Mushy's tucked away nice and safe, we'll have plenty of time to fix the wagon, won't we, Scarlet? Like all night, huh, Quince? Yes, sir. All right. Mr. Favor, seeing how the wagon got busted and the supplies all got spoiled, and them cows dead, and... And you being sore now, I'll be glad to pay for everything. Mushy, let's get this straight. You put that money away and you keep it out of my sight. We've had nothing but trouble because of that money. And we ain't gonna have no more trouble. You got that straight? Huh? You better get that straight. You better start looking for another job. I'm... I'm sorry, Mr. Favor. night, isn't it? I guess so. Why aren't you sleeping? Can't sleep, Mr. Wishbone. I keep seeing Mr. Favor. I sure am sorry. Yeah, drink that. I ain't thirsty. Go on, and drink it. Make you feel better. I don't think anything's gonna make me feel better. Not as long as I got all that. Mushy, well, I guess it's time you learned the facts of life. Facts? Extra money don't mean extra things. It just means extra responsibility. What responsibility? I ever tell you the story of the rich man and the poor man? Well, sir, the rich man and the poor man died and got up to the pearly gates at the same time. But old St. Peter, he let the rich man in first. And there was a big party. Angels and music and singing and, well, finally St. Peter remembered that poor man back the gates and went and let him in. Only by this time the party was all over. And the poor man says, well, why don't you throw me a party? And St. Peter says, well, a poor man like you comes in here every day. A rich man don't make it very often. That's what I mean about money, mushy. It means makes life an awful lot harder for those that's got it. it means they gotta take the responsibility for it. And if you don't, that's when the trouble starts. Just like yesterday. You understand? 
I think so. So, you just remember and not put your trust in money. Put your money in trust and everything will be all right. Now, you drink that coffee and get on to bed. It's gonna be the sun up before you know it. Sure will, Mr. Wishbone. Mr. Wishbone, thank you. she's run off. Huh? I'm sorry I did not do very good. I am going to see Miss Lori Lai, Laura Lai. So you will not have to put up on me no more for a while. Maybe, I think. Fare thee well, Harkness Mushroom. On account of what you said to him last night. Oh, he had that coming. Oh, well, then that makes two of us. I should have kept my big mouth shut. Yeah. Well, there's not much we can do about it now. No, uh, you know, everything that happened yesterday, that, that wasn't all his fault. It could have happened to anybody. Maybe. Uh, that female scavenger will pick him clean by noon. You know, it's... Really gonna be a shame no one's there to kind of look out for his interest. All right, all right. You two bleeding hearts, get off my back. You can go after him, but make sure you get that money in the bank before you bring him back. Yeah. Right. I'll bet 50. I'm in. Two hundred. Horatio, I got. Oh, we're too late. And he's better on a pile of junk. That gambling fool didn't even look at his whole card. Acts like he's trying to give it away. Yeah, you know she's got the other jack. Mushy, you blind idiot. Mr. Wishbone, Mr. Rowdy. Well, I'm. I'll be through here in a minute. That's pretty big braze. You've caught me a little short on cash. Oh, good. We'll get your money. It's been nice seeing you again, Lorelai. Take your hands off the table when you're not playing. Joe, give me a pen. Here you are. I'm calling your raise. Hmm. Pass the trailblazer to cover it. Now let's see what you're so proud of. Uh, Deuce is wild? That's right. That's five aces. You can't beat it. Oh, my goodness. I did it again. Come on, right here. Get the money. I'll get money. Come on. Wait a minute, cowboy. The game isn't over. As far as we're concerned, it is, Lorelei, unless you want to play with matches. It'll take me a couple of days to raise some more cash. Well, I'll tell you something. We'll talk about it on our way back from the back. Fair enough, but uh, how about the drink? 
drink to celebrate first. No, no thanks. Everybody, drinks on the house. Wait a minute now. Don't you, uh, don't you consult your partner before you give away the profits? You keep pushing, cowboy, and we'll both forget I'm a lady. <laughs> well, how about it, partner? Wouldn't you care for a little drink? Yes, ma'am. I'd like to have a sarsaparilla. Well, step right up to the bar. Thank you. Joe? Yes, give them all they want. Beer? Beer. Hi, Lorelei. You're all hard. I even give Christmas baskets to trail bums. You got yourself in a fix, Lorelei. Well, I'll get out of it. There are other games besides poker. All I need is a little time. Well, we've always been good friends, haven't we? Not good enough, but I can't win them all either. That depends. On what? Those two cowboys who broke it up. It would help if they were out of the way for a little while. Say, a couple of hours. There's nothing I can do, Lorelei. You could put them in jail. They ain't broken any laws. Well, think real hard. They must have tracked dirt on the boardwalk or uh, frowned at the mayor. Nah. Nah, Lorelei, I can't do it. Well, I uh, guess I'll just have to call in some IOUs to make up for the losses. You know I can't pay them. I know that, Walt. And there's nothing I'd like better than to help you, but what can I do? All right. I'll think of something. Come on, let's go. Let's go to the bank, Marshal. I don't want to go. You stop acting foolish and do like you're told. But that money caused all this trouble. I want to get rid of it. Yeah, well, that's why there's no better place for it than the bank. They don't get rid of it. Sure it does. You put it in the bank, and it's just like you don't have it anymore. Then one of these days, when you're old like Wish here, you get something to fall back on. <laughs> Any more smart out of you, I'm going to fall all over you. Now, come on, behave yourself. Hold on, partner. We have things to talk about. Let's go into the office. Wait just a minute now. He's afraid of the dark. Let go of him, you Jezebel. Marshal? What's the trouble? Well, my partner and I were just going into the office for a private business talk when these two gentlemen tried to interfere. Well, uh... That's your money, mister? So what if it isn't? Uh, I believe you'll find it belongs to my partner here, Marshal. Then give it to him. Good riddance. Well, he just hold it for me, Marshal. That'll be up to the judge to decide when circuit court convenes day after tomorrow. What? You're under arrest, both of you. Now, wait just a minute. What charge? Attempted theft. Any more talk, I may think of something else. <laughs> Let's go. I told you we should have got rid of it. Let's go. Certainly happy that you were only joking about arresting Mr. Rowdy and Mr. Wishman. Oh, yes. The marshal said they laughed about it all the way back to camp. Well, I had to do something so us businessmen could have a private talk, now didn't I? Well, I didn't want my friends to get in any trouble on account of that money. Well, don't worry, Mushy. You put it in the safe with your own hands, remember? Well, all the same, maybe I should have put it in the bank like they said. And now it'll be just as safe in the office. I'll keep it for you, and I won't even look at it. That's awful nice to you, ma'am. You're welcome to look at it, though, anytime you want to. Thanks, I'll do that. Uh, well, Mushy, let's have one final drink to celebrate our partnership. Excuse me. Then you can be on your way, since we both agreed that I'm going to run the business. 
Oh, uh, just while you're away driving cattle, of course. <laughs> uh, Joe, give my partner a drink. The best. You bet. Will it be, sir? You call me, sir? Oh, boy. That's right, sir. You are the boss. Well, I have a double sarsaparilla. Coming right up, sir. How does it feel being a partner, Mushy? Real good. Yes, ma'am. Now, that's the way I like to see a big man handle himself. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, but I've been thinking. If I'm an important businessman and all, maybe I ought to get some of them fancy clothes. New suit, maybe. Uh, with a stiff collar and, and maybe a hard hat. Well, that, that would take money. Well, you wouldn't mind opening a strong box for me, would you? Oh, no need to bother, Mushy. I can give you an advance right out of the cash drawer. Joe, give Mr. Mushgrove $50. $50? You heard me. Now, Mushy, let's go right over here, sit down, and make ourselves comfortable. Yes, ma'am. There you are. Uh, Joe, uh, bring over some of that free lunch, a lot of it. You could eat a little something before you go back to camp, couldn't you, Mushy? Yes, ma'am. Uh, girls, uh, come over here and meet your new boss. They've just been dying. Well, now, isn't he just the nicest? I'll say he is. Who ever heard of a handsome boss? <laughs> you just eat, drink, and be merry, baby, because tomorrow's a long way off. Here comes the line. Oh, Look right out, girl. Ellie, watch yourself. Here we are. There you are, Mr. Musgrove. And uh, here's ten, thirty, fifty dollars. We wouldn't want you to think we don't take good care of the boss, Mushy. I guess I'm the luckiest man in the world. <laughs> Why don't you eat something, honey? <laughs> I'll bet she's got him plucked cleaner than a boiled chicken by now. Well, I ain't worried about him. It's us I'm worried about. We did say one thing out of the deal. Look at that. Hey, that's the deed she signed. Yeah. How'd you get this? Well, I asked for it, of course. Hmm. Didn't by any chance light finger anything else, did you? Like enough money to bail us out of this trap? Nah. Well, I did lift this watch off of him. I give it to him for his birthday. Wasn't gonna let her steal it, too. Yes, well, now we can just count the hours till this trial begins. All right, you boys can be on your way. How come? Let's say I'm campaigning for votes. Gun belts are on the rack in the office. Well, where's Mushy? Your wealthy friend. Last time I saw him, he was cutting a wide swath through Tate's clothing store. Come on, maybe it isn't too late. Thanks for the hospitality, Marshal. Got the friendliest bed bugs I've ever seen. Yeah, the whole town brims with friendship, don't it? Of course, they could change any minute. Was I you, I'd leave right now. All three of you. doing here? Looking for you, you dandified jackass. Well, Miss Lorelei said you went back to camp. Never mind that. You got any money left? Well, yes, sir, Mr. Roddy. About a dollar and forty cents. Oh, I don't feel so good. I'd better... What'd she do, poison you? Oh, no, sir. Must have been that last turkey leg I had. It couldn't have been the ham and a roast beef. Or them pickles. They wouldn't upset me none particularly. Can't go on no more. Well, I'm surprised you got this far. What happened to the rest of the money? Well, I bought everything I wanted. And a lot of things I never even heard of. And 
I spent the money so fast it came up $48.60. And the rest of the money's in Miss Lorelei's strong box. Oh. She promised to save it for me. Oh, well, then that finishes that. I wouldn't be too sure, Wish. Don't forget we got this here paper. Oh, well, it's probably worthless. Yeah. Well, when I get through with that female road agent, she's gonna wish it was. Step right in and enjoy some real Texas hospitality. Free drinks on the inside. girls. Just getting to know the help. No, you can cry about it on the way out, cowboy. Mm. Afraid I won't be going, Lorelei. See this here deed that you signed over to Mushy? Well, the... That's right, it's the deed to this place. Got your signature on it. Now, you see, Mushy, he, uh, he thought the pace was getting a little too fast. So he signed it over to me. Hey, gee, that... Makes me half owner of the trailblazer now, doesn't it? And I suppose those free drinks outside are an example of how you expect the place to be run? Oh, no, no. You see, it's Bigfoot Wallace Day. Mm -hmm. Bigfoot Wallace, he was a Texas hero, and being a loyal Texan, you see, I've got to honor it. Well, all right, you've had your fun. I'm turning off the celebration. Hold on, partner. I recall reading somewhere that the decision of one partner is binding to the other, right? What about it? Well, I gave the order to keep those drinks flowing until we're all out. Now, you went around when that decision was handed down, so you just kind of got to go along with it. Come in. Yates? Yeah, come right in. Which walls do you want knocked out? Uh, well, you see, it's this one here. I thought we'd maybe knock it out and stick it back about 30 feet. Oh, well, easy. We'll just sit there. You out of here! Partner. I don't understand. I'm just trying to help out around here. I thought we'd push this wall back, make a real high-class gaming room out of it. Put in some roulette wheels, and one of those chuck luck faro outfits. That like. Do you have any idea how much that can cost? Mm hmm Yeah, I do. I figure... around the neighborhood of $1,500. Fine, just fine. Well, the wages of gluttony take a heavy toll. Have you considered turpentine and sugar? Oh. Oh, quit moaning, Mushy. You really think so, Reverend? The uh, turpentine and sugar? No doubt about it. Well, I've seen horses with a sprung fetlock get a dose of that stuff come up kicking on all fours. What did I tell you? You ought to pay more attention to me. Oh, I'm going to from now on, Mr. Wishbone. I promise. You sure you ain't going to stay mad at me? Of course not. What have I got to be mad at you for? Well, the money, it's an awful thing, ain't it? Amen, brother. Well, it isn't that bad. Well, you and Mr. Valley taking care of me and looking after me like this when I'm in trouble, and I let him put you in jail. Dreadful sin when a man finds enough meanness in him to turn from his friends. Well, it wasn't really his meanness, you see. It was that woman. Oh, no, the money changed everything, Mr. Wishbone. All them things I bought, I never enjoyed one of them. Why, I should have given the money to the Reverend for the new church. Oh, see, will you quit running off at the mouth?
Ralph. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. <laughs> but you can see he isn't really that cheerful. I tell you, Mr. Wishbone, or just knowing that that money ain't around anymore, I'm beginning to be awful cheerful. Ah, oh, here you are, Mushy. I got the money back for you. Laurel, I just bought out your share. <laughs> oh, no! No? Glory be! Will you take a reverend for the new church? Please. What? After all the trouble, I went to get it back? But ain't it right to do something for the Lord, Mr. Rowdy? He does a lot for us. I'm answering you, heathen. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Well, I appreciate all you've done for me, saving all the money and everything. But I ain't none too smart to know what to do with it. Besides, uh, well, I got my friends and a job and, and a new suit. And there ain't nothing else I need in the whole world. The Lord dealt you a bad hand, didn't he, son? Yes, sir. I guess he did. Now you're giving it back to him. Thank you, son. And thank you, too, brothers, for sharing your friend's blessed moment of charity. Oh, well, we was glad to do it. Well, first thing I'm going to buy with this is a big supply of shovels. Have to dig a good deep hole for the foundation. Oh, and you're all welcome to join me. Shovels, digging, good and deep. Uh, oh. <laughs> well, uh, thank you, Reverend. No, but we gotta get back the herd. Yeah, you see, I gotta make supper for the herd. I mean, the men, the drawers. Uh, maybe later. Well, I wouldn't mind digging a little. <laughs> then you can dig a hole and bury that suit in it. Now, come on, get out of here. <laughs> Bye. A man really doesn't have to dig to show the goodness in his heart, does he? Mushy. Sure. sure what? What well, mushy there? He couldn't have given away all that money, could he? He not only could, he did. Now, that means you parasites are going to have to find yourself a new proposition. Fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah, we've still got time for a little penny ante. Sure is good to be back, Mr. Wishbone. You're not going to be back very long. You don't get out of that suit. Wishbone, you know, I won't have to wait too long at the pearly gates. Mushy, I said get out of that suit. Sure thing. Sure, it's good to be back, Mr. Quince. Mr. Scarlett? Yeah. Playing poker? Some call it that. Could I sit in? I thought you said you gave all that money away. I didn't give it all away. I got a dollar left. Well, that's better than nothing. Here, you can deal. You know how to play seven card stack? I've heard it mentioned a couple of times. Do you wish what? You're dealing. One, 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 two, 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 three, three.
there's nothing but taste in there. Mushy, will you stop playing around in there and see if there's anything worth saving? Well, there ain't nothing in here that ain't wet. Well, it's all got to come out anyway. What was you doing down here getting washed away? Why didn't you get up on the plateau when that cloud opened up? Well, the horse is shied. What with the weather and all? You can't handle a team of horses by now? Maybe you'd better start taking some lessons, huh? And you, why didn't you get up on the plateau anyways? We well, always say, Mr. Favor, to follow Mr. Wishbone. Well, is anything savable? Well, I can scrape up enough for about two meals, then we're gonna have to resupply right from scratch. Well, they spread out for about two days, but at least we got them stopped. I got some boys down by the river pulling them out of the mud. Well, you've come to the wrong place for your little gold star. You, you got a nerve even showing up back here after turning them into the river instead of the hills. They headed me. I believe it. You ain't even got the brain cell to think a dumb cow. Senor Fever. We're in very bad trouble with the horses. Well, I pretended didn't even say that. Oh, it's true, senor. Four lost, half a dozen crippled. What happened? Didn't you cut them loose when the storm hit? Oh, well, a tree fell. A tree? You had them tied to a tree when that storm hit? Well, I thought... It... You thought... You What is the use? Save up. You know, there are times when I'm sick to death of this job. What in the world possesses a man to put up with this kind of foolishness, huh? Give me a reason. Just one good reason, huh? The good life? Beef and beans three times a day. Look at him get two nights sleep in a row and surrounded by a bunch of idiots. Well, maybe it's the glory. Sure, it must be the glory. Sure ain't the money, leastwise I ain't seen any of it. Boy, I swear, one of these days I'm really gonna up and quit. Hey, that's a real good idea. Why don't you quit? Well, before you make up your mind anything definite, would you mind picking me up a new canvas for the wagon and a load of supplies, maybe a couple of spare wheels? A new coffee pot. All right, all right, I said I'd give up. Ashton Corners is pretty close. I'll ride in in the morning and see what I can do. Oh, there's just one more thing, boss. As long as we're near this Ashton Corners outfit, the men sure could stand the night off. <laughs> 24 hours of roundup work out there. He's thinking of a night off. <laughs> Man has got to be an absolute ultimate idiot. <laughs> what do I say now? Well, when he's feeling like this, you don't say anything at all. <laughs> about a thing. Mr. Ashton Warner says you ought to have another year's extension. He'll be sorry not to see you, but he's terribly busy. Oh, my goodness. You tell him I said God bless him, Miss Sarah. Oh, that's my... Good luck, young man. Ma'am. <laughs> oh, uh, is Al in? Al? Oh, uh, Mr. Ashton Warner. My name's Favor Gilfavor. I need a bank draft cashed. Oh, yes. You're the cow 
driver. I've heard Mr. Ash and Warner speak of you. But he's left instructions not to be disturbed. Could you return later? Nope. I couldn't move another step, lady. Well, just camp right here. Thanks. I know it's difficult to remember, but a bank is a respectable institution, and we must try to keep our dignity. Yes, Mrs. Ashton Warner. Good morning, Mr. Ash and Warner. last time I was through. How's things down at the Red Diamond? I don't work there anymore. Is that right? I got married. Hey, congratulations. I'm Mrs. Ashton Warner now. You? Albert? Well, congratulations anyways. How long have I been to sleep? Is Albert still in? Well, suppose we find out. <gasps> Honey, this is a surprise. I didn't expect you today. Well, I never would have guessed it. Oh, Gil! Reach, partner! Albert. Now, now, please take off that silly thing. You're a respectable banker. What if someone came in here and saw you playing cowboy like that? Did you ever see anything like this? A pillar of the community, the town's most respected citizen, and he spends his time reading lurid magazines and daydreaming his life away. I don't really see anything wrong. Albert, will you please be home in time to dress for dinner? No, oh, sure, I won't be late, honey. Uh, Gil, it was nice to see you again. Frailty, thy name is woman. The man who wrote that must have been a hermit. Um, w. Ah, you think you got troubles. You should have been with a herd last night. That thunderstorm just about washed us out of business altogether. Maribel didn't really mean that. It's just that I... I sort of disappoint her somehow. Uh, I, I don't seem to be able to do anything right anymore. I don't know about that. It's a pretty smart draw you were working up there, fella. You mean it? Oh, well, I've seen a lot worse. Now, nah, Maribel's right. I'm... I'm just dreaming my life away. Oh, come on. A man's got to dream a little bit. You know, Gil, you may be right at that. When I get to thinking of the open trail, sleeping under the stars, beef and beans, singing around the campfire. Oh, oh, oh wait a minute. It's, it ain't quite exactly like that, Al. Honest. What I ain't a drove for a life wouldn't change places with what you got here. But it isn't the same thing. And and this would prove it to her. That I'm a real man's man, I mean. Gil, you gotta take me on as a drover. That would show her I'm no dreamer. I've read all about it. I can do it. I know I can. Well, look at it. It really isn't all it's cracked up to be, huh? You said yourself I was pretty handy with a gun. And, and I know all about cattle. If you get caught in a stampede, you just roll up in the ball and they'll go right past you, right? 
Where did you find that? Well, it said so. Right. Oh, I believe you. I believe you. Never mind. How about it, Gil? Please. It would make things right between Maribel and me. Well, look, in, in the first place, uh, it wouldn't be fair to the other men taking on an inexperienced man. I know. You think I can't do it? You and Maribel. Probably the rest of the town, too. See, you know, I'm really sorry. I'd like to help you out, honest. Uh, this bank draft, I, I need the cash. Oh, sure. See you next year, I guess. Good luck. I'm sure gonna need it. I'm scraping the bottom of the barrel as it is. Just be enough to get the herd moving. strays yesterday. He won't be back for a week or more. A week? I can't wait that long. I won't have any hurt left. Sure am sorry, Gil. Not gonna be as sorry as this town is after I take it apart board by board. Oh, now, Gil, you know there's no sense in that. Whoever robbed you is probably long gone. Yeah. I'll be long gone, too, if I don't get that hurt moving. Well, there's, there's nothing for it, but you have to give me a loan now. Oh, I'm sorry, Gil. I sure wish I could help you out, but, you know, I can't go around giving out loose loans. I got a board of directors to think of. You know I'm good for it. We're only a month from the railhead. Yeah, I know, but uh, you understand. It's like you not being able to take me on as a drover. Same problem, so to speak. I'll tell you what, though. I'll make you a deal. All right, all right. I'll take you on as a drover. Give me the loan. Uh, not quite that. I'll take the herd to market as trail boss. As now, what? Now, I'm making you a good deal, a good deal, Gil, if you'll just listen to me. Oh. Now, you get your share at the end of the drive. I'm not interested in the money. And on top of that, you'll run the bank while I'm gone. $400 for the month. Nice, luxurious office. You said yourself if any drover would be happy to change places with me. Oh, what am I thinking of? No, no, it wouldn't work out. The men wouldn't go along with it. You don't know anything about boss and a herd. I'll just have to get the money someplace else. 
The telegraph wires are down if you were thinking of wiring. Mm -hmm. I'll just have to find out how good my credit is in this town. Mr. Broxton's been a very nasty man since his wife ran off with that cow hand. And I wouldn't bother Red. Business has been bad at the Diamond since Maribel left the place. Ran off with the cow hand. I had about a dozen last nail in the coffin. Hit by a thunderstorm, heard stampeded, get hit in the head and robbed, and no credit. Of course. On the other hand, uh, you do have a way out. Well, straighten this thing out, put them in there, get some more wood on the fire, and put the coffee on. Oh, am I glad to see you. Hey, you didn't happen to bring the coffee, did you? That we got, I'm even ashamed, no, sir. No, didn't bring anything. Matter of fact, I just came to pick up what's left of my gear. What do you mean? Just that. Oh, got them all rounded up, boss. All except about a hundred head. Hey, good day's work. Well, I guess that does it. Oh, uh, by the way, you'll have a new trail boss come morning. What do you mean, new trail you boss? Go? Wait a minute, you didn't... You, you didn't take me serious when I said that thing about quitting. You want to know? I think it's the first really sensible thing you've said. Well, yeah, nothing more to be said about it. It's done. Anybody doesn't want to go along with it, well, it's your share you'll be giving up. Uh, just like that? That's it. His name is uh, Ashton Warner. Albert Ashton Warner. What's he doing with two names? He'll be here in the morning. What does this uh, Warner Ashton fella do? Where's he from? Ashton Warner. He's the local banker. Banker? What's that? Uh, what's he know about uh, trail herding? No way. He's read all about it. Read all? That must make him really uh, swell. What kind of a deal you've got with him? I'm pretty good. I'm going to look after the bank. Oh, I almost forgot. Compliments of Mr. Warner. What's that? Money, that's what it is. Hey, money. Look at that. $20 gold pieces. Hey, not fair for everybody. Yeah. I think you'd holler quite so loud when you saw $20 gold pieces. Boss, what's wrong? Well, not a thing. I just guess I made myself a pretty good deal after all. Miss Wood, Miss Wishbone, you want me to hide up the fire? Yeah, you do that. Hot up the fire and then sit in it, will you? Yes, sir. Did you say 3,000 cows? Give her a take a few. And you're going to take over the drive? No problem. Not for a man of my experience. I was dogging steers before I took my first step. Yeah. Hi, Gil. How'd it go? Oh, I'll go along with you, all right. Gold seems to be something they understand. Uh, money talk, sure it does. Well, you get in the bank, you'll see what I mean. Oh, uh, Tony, this is Mr. Favor. He's the one who's going to be running the bank. Oh, uh, take any chair in the house. <laughs> oh, Gil, when we get through here, I'll take you over to my tailor. Uh -huh. He'll fix you up from head to foot. A part of the business, you might say. Oh, and there's a director's meeting tomorrow, every Tuesday. But don't worry, they'll help you, let you know what's going on. Nothing much can go wrong in a month. Albert Ashton Warner, what is this I hear? A trail boss. You? You don't even know which way is north. And I do so. It's that way. You can't be serious. You'll be the laughingstock of the whole town. What about the bank? Gil's taking care of the bank. 
Gil. You have lost your mind. And I won't stand for it. Either you come to your senses and give up this foolishness, oh, or I... Oh, honey, I'll only be gone a month. Well, if you were to make a fool of yourself, you go ahead. This time, you'll really do it. But don't expect me to be here when you come back. And I suppose you think you know how to run a bank. We'll be back up before you're through. Boy, when she says something, it stays said. Looks like our deal fell through. I guess you'll have to think about giving me a loan again, old buddy, huh? No, no, no. Everything's gonna be fine now. I know Maribel. Everything's gonna be fine, hmm? Whatever you say, Al. Coffee ready yet? Every time I turn around, you're belly aching about the coffee. Mushy, will you see our friend gets a cup here? Sure don't seem right to me that a man should have two names, like this Ashton Warner. Maybe he had two fathers. Hey, yeah, you stupid. One of them's probably his mother's name. Well, I got a mother, too, but I sure don't use her name. Well, maybe you ought to. What? This man, what kind of trail boss will he be? Who cares, as long as he keeps handing out these here gold pieces? Well, how bad can he be? Rowdy can sure pull us through, but Mr. Favor, well, he acts like this storm was our fault. Yes, he has never been so bad. Now, don't go running Mr. Favor down. I've never known him yet to not have a good reason for anything he does. He's probably in some real serious trouble. Ashton Warner. Mr. Favor told you about me last night. I'm your trail boss. Yeah, well, Ruddy Yates, uh, Ramrod. I'm very pleased to meet you, sir. Yes, this here is Wishbone, the uh, cook. Very important man on a drive, the cook. How do you do, sir? And this is uh, my louse, Mushy. Ah, Mr. Mushy. What, you hear that? He called me mister. Uh, this here's uh, Toothless over here. Mr. Toothless, how do you do, sir? Quince, Scarlet. Mr. Quince. Jesus. Scarlet. Mr. Jesus. Con mucho gusto, senor. Uh, much, uh, if I could have my horse taken care of. Oh, I'll take care of him, senor. Thank you. Well, men, shall we get started? We have a lot to settle at our first meeting. I always say the only proper way to run a business is through parliamentary procedure. Mr. Yates, if you'd prepare a suitable setup, uh, perhaps some wooden boxes for seating, some of the men will help you. Yeah. Who has the best penmanship? Well, who can write? Uh, you, Mr. Uh, Toothless? Me? Me? No, no, I can't even read. Well, if I do say so myself, I got a pretty good hand. Fine, fine. Mr. Wishbone will act as secretary. You'll need some paper and a pencil to take the minutes of the meeting. I'll explain the procedure as we go along. Just regular parliamentary procedure, you know. Well, come on, men. Let's get started. <laughs> Well, then, to recap, uh, Mr. Wishbone will lead one of the special committees to determine the necessary supplies. Mr. Jesus, you better confer with him on the needs of the Remuda. Uh, Mr. Yates, of course, being ramrod, will lead the standing committee until we reach market. 
Yeah, well, don't forget about the... The floor recognizes Mr. Yates. Huh? Uh, uh, don't forget about the strays we got to round up. Oh, yes. Uh, Mr. Yates will also head a committee to round up the strays. All the drovers will report to him at the termination of this meeting. Now, uh... I'd like to hear a motion to adjourn. Uh, Mr. Marcy, perhaps you'd like to make that motion. Uh, sure, what would I say? Just say I make a motion to adjourn. Oh, I make a motion to adjourn. Fine, fine. Anyone second the motion? Uh, Mr. Quince? Yeah. Just say I second the motion. Oh, yeah, well, I don't mind, I second it. Aye. 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 Opposed? Adjourned. Now my office will be set up over by that tree if anyone needs to see me. Well, we're going to be bad, but this is ridiculous. Yeah, you know, I, I wonder why Mr. Favre done this to us. It's got to be done, that's for sure. He's got to be in terrible trouble. And so, if we can assure the school committee that a long-term loan is available to them, it will facilitate their work considerably. Whoa, whoa, back up, back up. As I get it, the town hasn't even voted on this issue yet. Would the chairman care to rise to a point of order? Just want to stop some of this foolishness. Now, if the town hasn't voted on the school bond issue, I don't see the point of all this nonsense. After the town's voted, well, then we can do something about it. Until then, well, we just seem to be wasting a lot of time with a lot of hot air, huh? Well, I refuse to be insulted in such a manner. I make a motion that this meeting be adjourned. I second the motion. Aye. Aye. Good day. What in the world got into them? Oh, is that some people out there waiting to see me, Miss Goodley? Yes, sir. They want to know if anything's going to change now that Mr. Ashton Warren is gone. Their mortgages and loans. Yeah, well, send them in. Send them in. Yes, sir. Hi, Paul. What did you say to those board members? You have alienated every one of them. Do you think you're running a bunch of cows around here? This is a respectable bank. Oh, I knew this would happen. Look, Favor, you get out there and you tell Albert Ashton Warner that he's to come back here immediately. You know, you ain't done nothing but holler for the last two days. Oh. Until you learn some manners, why don't you get out? Uh, just... And if you want a message delivered to Albert, I suggest you deliver it yourself. Well, hello, ma'am. Get out of my way! You uh, just had the pleasure of meeting Mrs. Ashton Warner. Oh. Do all the uh, uh, bankers uh, dress like this? Oh, this one does, fella. Oh, well, I want to talk to you. What can I do for you? Um, business is rather pressing, you know. Uh, well, it's about this Ashton Werner fellow, boss. I'm not your boss anymore. All right, all right. But, uh, you know, he isn't going to make a trail, boss. Uh, this morning, first thing, he calls a meeting. You imagine if we had a stampede or something. Uh, maybe we'd all gather around and sit on boxes and talk about it. Yeah, Albert is pretty big on meetings. Yeah, well... Anyway, the boys and I, we thought that if, if there's some trouble, you know, if something's wrong, maybe we could all help out. Look, I keep telling you, there's nothing wrong. I just decided to take up a new business. And ain't nothing wrong with banking at all. Well, you're an outdoors man. You couldn't be cooped up in a place like this. Look, I've got to get back to work. Well, don't you care about the herd? Well, I'll end up in Alaska somewhere. Well, I suggest instead of uh, standing around here belly aching and wasting your time that you try training him for the job. You might be surprised to find what a tough little guy he is. Training him? He can't even ride a horse. 
Well, everybody had to learn sometime. Everybody? Well, I never thought I'd see the day when you'd sell the herd down the river, but I guess I was wrong. <laughs> All right. I'll train him. I'll make him the best little trail boss you ever saw. Make him change his mind. Now, look, if we get rid of this fella and we don't have any trail boss at all, Mr. Favor will be back in a minute. What suggestion you got to make? Do just exactly what Mr. Favor said. Train him. Only we'll train him in such a way he'll never want to see a trail drive again. Give him the old business, huh? Yeah. Yeah, hey, I can show him the red dog track. That ought to get him. Yeah. And I'll let Mushy do the cooking. Perfect, Mushy. If that don't poison him, nothing will. How's it going? Yes, Kim. That was wonderful, man. Just wonderful. Another day or two, and I'll be a seasoned Galahad of the prairies. Oh, what's this? Slum and gullion, I bet. The pride of the plains. <laughs> oh, superb. Truly a gourmet's delight. I've never tasted anything so good. A double portion, if you please, Mr. Mushy. Well, yes, sir. Well, Mr. Ashton Warner, all you have to do is brace yourself just like this. All right. Now, you go ahead and take it. I got him. I got him. Fractions or percentages? Of course I can. What? Can you count? This is serious. Never been more serious in my life. If you can't count, get out. I got enough trouble as it is. You don't know what trouble is, you blockhead. There's going to be a run on the bank. A what? A run on the bank. Now do you see the mess you've made of things around here? We'll be bankrupt. But don't just sit there. Go lock the doors and get Albert back here. Get Albert back? Get Albert back. Now, what in the world do you think drove him out of here in the first place? You nagged and you scolded and you pushed him until he had to leave. Me? That's right, and don't try to outshout me, lady. You took one of the nicest little guys in the world and you tried to change him until he didn't know what he was. Now, you just let me say something to you. His daydreams of being a cowboy wasn't hurting nobody until you pushed him too far. So now he's out there trying to prove he's a man all over again, and just for your sake. You don't understand one thing. Uh, he'll probably get himself killed trying to do it. But are you worried about him? 
No, you're worried about your precious little bank and what people are going to think. Mr. Faber. I know, Sarah. But I... I know I'll be out in a minute. So don't come belly aching and crying to me because it is much too late. Call in all the mortgages, and why are the loans suddenly due? Because the loans and the mortgages were way overdue. Uh, I was just tidying things up. There were dates in every one of them. Mr. Ashton Warner didn't do business like that. No, he I knew our problems, and he went along with us. Now, what's the good of us having our money in the bank if we ain't allowed to use it? That's right. yeah. It's our money. Yeah. All right, all right. I'll tell you what I'll do. Um, I'll give you extensions, just like Albert did, huh? But we don't want to do business with you, Mr. Faber. We want Mr. Ashton Warner back here! Yeah! Now, he's a fine gentleman. Now, he's a man we could respect. A man to trust our money to. Now, we want him back here in the morning, or else we're going to start a bank of our own. Yeah! All right, all right. Take it easy. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll go talk to Albert, all right? Remember, Mr. Favor, if he's not back here in the morning, we're drawing our money out. Yeah. Do you think you'll come back? I wouldn't know. I'll say one thing about that son of a gun. He lasts a lot longer than I figured he would. Well, you can say that again. We're never gonna get rid of that little son of a gun. Yeah, he even liked Mushy's cooking. Well, what's wrong with that? Ah, ah, ain't this a happy little group? Where's Albert? What happened to you, Jimbo? Oh, I was showing our new boss there the red dog trick. Red dogging? How come? You said to train him. It's kind of heavy training, ain't it? We thought we'd drop him up a little and he'd want to leave and you'd come back. Mm. How'd it go? It didn't. How'd it go with you? I mean, oh, fine. Oh, absolutely fine. Where's Albert? Oh, he's in his office. Over there under that tree. Gil, good to see you. Gil, it's just like I thought it was going to be. I can't wait until we get started. I'm afraid I got a little bad news for you now. Nothing wrong with Maribel. No, 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 it's the bank. The bank? I'm afraid I, well, I just didn't do so hot. Uh, townspeople insist if you're not back by tomorrow morning, they're gonna run on the bank and close it down. Oh, gee, Gil, I can't do that. I'm, I'm pulling out first thing in the morning. But, look, you, you could do me a favor. But the bank will go broke. Oh, the bank's got plenty of money to pay him back. Look, well, what about this Maribel? is what I want you to do. Oh, forget about Maribel. I've got a trust fund set up for her. It's about tomorrow, Gil. I'm going to start off real early. And I want to make sure that Maribel's there watching me lead the herd out. And I want you to be sure to get Maribel out there real early, too, to watch me. I'm going to take him across the river in front of the whole town. Al, don't you understand? The town likes and needs you across the river. Yeah. You can't take them across the river, yeah? That's one big bog down there right now. Uh, You've got to go around by the foothills. I, I crossed it myself this afternoon. Well, that's different. Sure, one rider might get through and back on a dry strip, but a whole herd spread out and bunched up, they'd go under. Oh, You've got to go the other way. Don't worry, Gil. I got it all figured out. Look, you'll lose half the herd. You've got to go the other oh, way. Gil. You said yourself, the trail boss has the final word. Well, I think I'll turn in. It's been a hard day. Well, no, no, no. You can't go, um, not on your last night. No? Oh, haven't you ever read about that? Oh, yeah, sure, it's expected of you. You and the men to have a final night on the town. Oh, no, oh, well, what kind of respect would the men have for a trail boss who didn't have a little red eye and look over the girls on his last night? Well, they're getting ready back there right now, expecting it. They've been telling me how good you've been doing up till now. They have. 
have. Well, you wouldn't want to let him down, would you? No, I sure Good. I'll I see wouldn't. you at the Red Diamond. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Everybody up. Come on, you're getting ready to go into town. What are you talking oh, about? That's an order. You get into the Red Diamond and you make sure that Albert's with you. Does that mean you're going to be our boss again, Mr. Favor? Well, we'll see. of respect. Some of it might rub off on you, huh? Look, Belle, all you gotta do is be your old self. People gonna like you more than enough. And they like Albert, too. They showed you that this afternoon. Oh, I, I know that now, but it's too late now. Well, maybe not. Will you do anything to get him back? Anything. All right. Why 
why don't you say maybe? Now that we've met, why don't you set the day for you and me? Cowboy, all you want to. A man's got to have his dreams. Really? Well, I've got a contract with Mr. Faber. Oh, don't give it another thought. It's just a little old piece of paper. Please, Albert. Well, yeah, we'll sure miss you, boss. Yeah, we sure will. Well, the, the bank needs my attention, and much as I'd love to go with you fellas, my duty comes first. Oh, Albert. Oh. Well, here's the contract, Mr. Hayden. Oh, uh, Gil, we, uh, we found the thief, the fellow that took that money. Yeah, he was awfully sorry. He, uh, he's learned his lesson, though. He, he won't do it anymore. Oh, don't give it another thought. 